So thank you, Connie, for giving the very thought-provoking and interesting uh, uh, introduction uh, and first session uh, to the first session. So uh, and welcome everyone to the Hong Kong Art Gallery Association's uh, annual symposium. And um, I'm very happy to be moderating this panel with uh, my panelists. Uh, and on my left is Connie Lam, who just gave the keynote. And uh, her, uh, for those of you not familiar, Connie is the executive director at the Hong Kong Art Center. And she's been there uh, since the 1990s, and she's been the director since 2009. Um, and on my right, uh, we have Johnson Chen, who maybe needs no introduction, um, but, <laughs> um, but uh, is a director and founder of Han Art, uh, an esteemed gallery here in Hong Kong, um, and also is a curator and um, has been working on a few projects, in soon, including Jali Hall and, um, and uh, Western Heavens, among others. Um, and uh, uh, to his right is Florian Knotte, who is the uh, director of the University of the Museum and Art Gallery at HKU Hong Kong University of Hong Kong, um, and so we're here to talk about this question uh, of art market versus cultural center, right? That's the kind of the topic. Um, where does Hong Kong stand? And I think Connie, one of the things that you very helpfully did in your presentation is kind of undo this kind of opposition, right? It's not a, it's not the art market versus cultural center. It's kind of how this ecology is kind of more nuanced and more complicated than that. And so maybe um, I don't know if would be okay if we had each of you give a few thoughts, shared a few thoughts uh, in general in response to Connie before. Uh, yeah. Okay. So. <laughs> Thank you, Johnson. <laughs> it's good to see you. <laughs> this is the third public event we go we do together this year, right? right? We we seem to be following each other around. Yes, um, I I very much um, thought that the the second slide that Connie showed um, summed up a lot of what we are all about. The audience was in the center of that big. Um, graph that she showed and I think our joint interest the idea that the the cultural center is really a community if you think about it more philosophically that is made up of commercial art galleries of non-for-profit organizations private and government supported museums and that we all work together with the same public, for the same public, with very, very similar interests. And that the institutions are friends with the one another, we art professionals all know each other, and that we form one circle working together with other people. I moved to Hong Kong from, from New York, where I worked for a very wealthy private museum, and participated more in the art market in the sense that I bought regularly for, for the museum to add to the, to the collections. Um, moving to Hong Kong, um, I don't do that so much anymore, but one of, the, one of the reasons for me for coming here was very much and still is for staying, the, the growing and very, very lively art scene. And of course, it, that is really the combination of all different art institutions coming together. I was more aware of the growing private art sector, um, looking at Hong Kong from the distance um, seven, eight years ago. But of course, since then, we also, as you mentioned, have many more museums. And so I think the two private and, and public sector um, are really intertwined and grow together and we support one another. Um, I think um, the uh, speech Connie gave is a very good indicator of um, uh, what the Hong Kong's, uh, the direction of the Hong Kong art scene. You need people who are very enthusiastic, who are devoted to uh, the issues of art. You, you need people who feel that art is important for making the social fabric work. And uh, um, Connie has demonstrated that in Hong Kong, um, on non-governmental level, with the support of the government, I, uh, of course, um, it is possible to build up institutions that uh, run parallel and fill in different niches of um, of the uh, art ecology, as uh, Connie explained. Mm. And uh, uh, since we are 
uh, gallery association and you work with collectors, um, uh, we should also think about this issue about collecting. Um, collecting, of course, for a lot of people is, a, is, a, is an exciting an investment game as well as a game for, uh, is like an adult uh, Toys R Us. People go to galleries, they go to art fairs, it is, some, it is a place to get you excited. But, um, but it is the two actually come together um, and uh, the two also say something a little different. Um, the, the idea of, of collecting uh, is, of course, always much more than investing because um, um, there is a, a much slower turnover. Uh, maybe there's a very radical uh, change in value, appreciation, or even plummeting uh, value as well. So um, it is not really um, a place where a lot of investors want to put their money because um, when you want to get rid of a shares, you can do it on a phone call. When, with, with an artwork, um, there is much uh, bigger time lag. However, collecting gives other satisfaction because uh, all the collector friends I know, um, they share this same sort of enthusiasm that Connie demonstrated to us. Um, you get excited about art, you identify with the art, you identify with the art projects you associate yourself with. So what it really um, tells me is that um, the collecting of art actually is the addition to everybody's persona or they define everybody's persona. Uh, when you collect certain direction of things, you, you manifest your desires, you manifest your interest and your knowledge, and you actually grow with the artists, uh, with the artwork you accrue. So uh, in this sense, it is um, uh, very important to have, uh, or art collecting serves a very important role in fulfilling the destiny and the purpose of art making. Um, and, uh, but on the other side, um, since we all talk about the art market, the way we speak about art uh, is something which we need to rethink now. Because when we use the uh, language like art industry, when we talk about artwork, about art production, we're actually using the language of capitalist production. And uh, this, this type of thinking about art uh, has been has been critical for also ushering the other angle of art, the avant-garde, which is the uh, which really arose in and critique against this uh, this big divide uh, in the last couple of hundred years. However, um, is the uh, capitalist divide on either side is the only way to to go about art uh, is um, critical position of art. Uh, by intellectuals and theorists of art, the, the only really cool position to take. Uh, we, it's time to rethink. If you look at art market, it also tells you something now. Um, in the Chinese art market in the last 10 years, um, there was a big shift back from the contemporary, the modern art, to classical art. And um, it is not just for the sake of, um, for the sake of, um, value appreciation. It is also, I think, in a uh, change in sensibility and the way people think about what art does. And uh, this idea of art being critical is one thing. And the other dimension of art, which is it fulfills and it actually mends the break. It mends the, the, the disparity between reality and what, um, what objects and the real world uh, has actually broken the part of what has broken in the um, in the sense of uh, harmony and uh, uh, an agreement with the world, and art actually fulfills that that work. So, um, uh, Florian and I um, we did uh, some projects together, and some of it may not sound like really serious artwork because we work on a project together on lacquer, uh, the uh, lacquer material, a uh, craft. But um, um, it was, of course, a um, very important subject for people interested in the history of, um, of material production and craft, because it was the one of the earliest um, um, 
crop production in China. The earliest lacquer work was made 8,000 years ago. But what it really, the, what it, but what really prompted people like uh, us to go into this, as people uh, who also work in time contemporary art, is that there's nothing a growing sense that um, artwork that blends into the everyday, artworks that ties into what people what people do, how they live day by day, um, is where art happens. This is the the um, the avant garde, the, the front line of where art and aesthetics operate. And I noticed, um, uh, I didn't realize he had it on um, this last uh, collector's um, uh, show of Guan Yi. Uh, I was quite surprised when I saw a Lee Kit painting there, because yeah. what Lee Kit does is that he tried to, plan, tried to bring together uh, what we are familiar with in every day, and then surprise you by showing you, in fact, art production uh, or artwork is actually um, uh, a slow transit, but a transit that transforms it completely. Um, and uh, so there are, um, there are a lot of things we can rethink today, now that the art market is actually in a, in a huge dip. So, <laughs> it's, so it's a very good time to, to, to sit back and rethink what art is and how, um, what type of art we should, we should support and in which direction we, we should take our exhibitions. And uh, then, of course, how do we survive our landlords? <laughs> so, um, so there were a few questions that I had kind of circulated amongst us before before uh, our panel today, and one of them had to do, you know, with I think some of the things that Johnson you were addressing, the kind of the um, I th and I think both Connie and Florian also addressed, is the presence or the importance of an audience, right? There has to be an audience for in order for there to be an art ecology. Um, and given, I think, that this is something that's not just unique to Hong Kong, but something that I think has been developing across Asia in general, um, are there specific aspects of that um, you know, uh, development within the Hong Kong context, right? And Johnson, I think you, you pointed out that it's not just, uh, there are different kinds of audiences. So you know, the, there's also collectors as a kind of very specific form of an audience for art. Um, ones who not, are not only there to appreciate the art and view it, but also to collect it, to buy it, to support the, the galleries that you know, sell the work, and also in some ways to kind of you know, provide a kind of um, financial infrastructure, right, or basis for, for the larger kind of ecology. Um, is there a kind of a different relationship between the collector base and Hong Kong than other Asian cities? Or you know, would you say that there's a very you know, specific kind of um, audience for art here? Um, yeah, yes, yeah, so, I mean, you know, like, I guess, you know, what are the specificities of, of the Hong Kong? Because, I, I mean, the prompt that we have is that, you know, we have this kind of, you know, art market, cultural center, where does Hong Kong stand, right? And so, like, what are the specificities of this, uh, of this place that we're all in, you know? I think in, in, I think in most places, um, uh, for gallerists, mm -hmm. their first audience um, is, the, is the local population. Mm -hmm. um, but the collectors of uh, art in Hong Kong, um, especially the new art, tends mostly to be um, expatriates, mm -hmm. people coming in from the outside. Mm -hmm. And uh, they spot what has is, what is been removed from the, from the everyday life and the everyday uh, uh, art uh, Practices, mm -hmm. so um, so that is one very important uh, audience for for Hong Kong art, especially today when um, when a lot of new artists um, take art as the, as a new battleground. This mm -hmm. is the new forefront for them yeah. to to take social, uh, political, cultural issues. Mm -hmm. I know some uh, artists I've worked with for a long time before in Hong Kong. Now they've all gone. To the, gone to the new territories to do um, eco farming, mm. I including one or two very famous critics, mm -hmm. and uh, it is certainly not for economic reasons because I can't imagine them very very successful farmers. <laughs> but um, um, but this type of art will, will have um, a more difficult um, uh, more difficult relation with uh, uh, with inexperienced collectors or people who are not less. Um, inclined to looking at art from a more global perspective. Yeah. Um, the only place I've actually had a gallery was in Taiwan, and uh, 
uh, I had a pretty good re reputation because I was a very good Taiwan artist mm -hmm. for a number of years, but I, but I didn't go back very often, so it sort of failed financially. <laughs> so I can't really tell so much about Taiwan. Mm. But I can say one thing is, is that the whole camaraderie uh, of artists in Taiwan uh, is a little bit different. Mm -hmm. And then there's a very, very strong, um, uh, from the, in the, it was in the early 90s that I, that I uh, started this gallery, or around the same time actually I started doing research in contemporary art in mainland China. Um, in Taiwan, the, the, this big art um, um, scene mm -hmm. uh, started to appear after, um, um, uh, after um, the KMT started to open up. Mm. And um, um, after Chiang Kai-shek's son took over, yeah. and uh, did all these very radical democratic reforms. Mm -hmm. um, suddenly people were into the, same, uh, into the same concerns as Hong Kong artists. They start to be obsessed with um, the local identity, especially grassroots identity. Yeah. Um, then of course there's another line, which are older collectors who want to collect art, which will, which will bring them in line with, the, with their motherland they left behind in mainland. Yeah. I see that in Hong Kong. Um, this, uh, this is also very much the case, yeah. um, except it seems to have worked, worked in the other direction. <laughs> in the 80s, there was the, the big um, uh, renaissance of uh, collecting of ink master, or modern ink master, but who um, based in mainland China and who have, um, and many of them actually were already active before 49. Mm -hmm. um, and, th and then, in more recent years, the, the younger, more experimental artists start to come around to find the audience. Mm, okay, yeah. So, I mean, you're speaking uh, 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 th to this question with as someone who you know has had a long experience working with the art market in, in different contexts, um, here in Hong Kong, but also in Taiwan, as you were mentioning. But also, I mean, I think the collector base here, it's, it strikes me that you're not just working with a Hong Kong collector base, you're also, I mean, one of, maybe one answer to the, the question that I gave w uh, about, you know, like the, you know, what are the particularities is one of them, I guess, is that Hong Kong has actually for, for a while um, been a place where people come to to buy art, right? And it's not just um, people in Hong Kong who are buying the art. Um, if anything, it wasn't necessarily the collector base was here. It was that here was the market and the base was somewhere else. Yeah. Well, um, doing the entrepot trade is very much the ethos of Hong Kong, whether mm -hmm. it was in making plastic flowers yeah. or making uh, nylon stockings in the 50s and 60s. Now we're doing it with art. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, yeah, it's a place where, yeah, it's a market, right? So, so Hong Kong well, uh, has always been this cosmopolitan center. Mm -hmm. um, well, always, I mean, always, is when, uh, always since my, my, since my life. Yeah. And, uh -huh. <laughs> and, uh, um, and there may be a big change. I, I, uh, in a way, the, um, what is happening with the younger generation here mm -hmm. uh, is almost like, like this xenophobic, ref the xenophobic refusal mm. um, of the greater China now in uh, um, now enforcing itself mm. as well as um, as well as uh, influencing mm. the, um, the values which they feel that it is uh, it is uh, crucial to their own identity mm. and how this will work out will be very important because um, uh, at the end of the day uh, Hong Kong survival depends on this cosmopolitanism whether it is towards the the world. Uh, farther up, uh, away, or it is actually uh, toward, toward the world, which is uh, our background. Yeah. And uh, a very interesting thing to happen, I think, in 1997. Uh, in the 70s, uh, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s even, people always thought of the world, uh, or the world that opened up to you mm -hmm. is actually toward the west. Yeah. Or way to the south of Australia, maybe. Mm. But. Um, but since um, 1997, this, this, um, this th the vision of the horizon has turned around, has turned um, backwards. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the world that opens up with possibility uh, in the future was actually England, China. Yeah. And uh, so um, Hong Kong also has this reversal for everybody. Mm. And, uh, and today, of course, we see uh, a radical change. And uh, we see a lot of young people never go to mainland China. And, Mm -hmm. uh, and it is much easier for them now than it was in the old days. Yeah. So this is also things we need to tackle with.
Hmm. Okay, interesting. Uh, Florian, can I ask, so as someone who's maybe a more recent arrival, uh, or you know, who came to Hong Kong uh, in the last 10 years, right? In 2013, I think, was when you started at the museum, uh, university museum. Um, what has your kind of impression been about you know Hong Kong as a place? I mean, what was it that drew you here when you arrived, and what was you know, and how has it changed since then um, in terms of you know this dynamic between the art market and um, the kind of the museums and uh, art centers? Um, I'm. I should maybe say that I I knew a little bit of China mm. before I knew Hong Kong. Mm. And I think that is that is maybe true for some people, especially in in culture, who move here from the outside. Um, I I started out as a as a French art scholar, but then became very interested in Chinese influences in Europe and European influences in China. So, I I've been to to China uh, regularly since two thousand and one, um, and then only as you said, uh, moved here seven years ago. I can next month maybe become a permanent resident. Um, Congratulations. I think, I'm um, looking forward to it, yes. Um, I think, as I said, one reason for coming here, and I moved here from New York, right? So was certainly the growing and the thriving art market um, already seven years ago, and I think it it, it only improved and, and grew since. And I think maybe the, in in a humble way, maybe the the opportunity or the the thinking that one could contribute a little bit to a developing art scene, something that I think um, would be a lot more difficult to do in in London, maybe where I studied or New York, right? So I think here by being part of the community, by you know, all of us coming together, I think that we, we put the, the puzzle pieces together to create an, an art scene together. And I think that's really um, reassuring and, and, and very motivating. And then when I arrived, the, the, the warm welcome I received from, from people everywhere, I mean, not just in the art scene, but also uh, very much so in the art scene. So, for example, um, Catherine I met um, very early on, and then, of course, we are interested in China, but also in France, and so many, many shared interests. We spent so much time s recently. So many, many very dear connections that I think um, make us uh, collaborate more, support one another, and so on. And so I'm, I'm what I'm experiencing now is is maybe in some ways a little bit different from what I expected, but certainly no less um, motivating and and reassuring. Okay, so interesting. So so in addition to the cosmopolitanism and openness, I think Johnson that you were kind of evoking, there's also a sense of collaboration and openness to cooperation and working together within the within the local. Uh, that's here. I think this is something that you know you you stressed in your your conversation as well. Um, I, and uh, you know, so I I think that maybe as a way of kind of um, sketching out the this kind of or giving a framework to this. I mean, obviously, um, uh, Florian, you arrived uh, a little after the founding of Art Basel here in Hong Kong, right? I, Art Basel begins in 2012, I think, here. And we're about to go into the eighth edition, I guess, next year. Um, and obviously, that has done a lot to kind of, you know, put um, Hong Kong on a map of a c contemporary art world. And maybe kind of, you know, that's kind of gone back. But um, before that, of course, there was Art HK. Um, but in terms of the different um, organizations that we represent, I think you know, uh, on on the stage we have four very different organizations with which we're affiliated, and they kind of point to the the prehistory or the existence of a history before that because i think some people you know don't really think about hong kong in relation to the art world until this kind of the last decade but in fact i think you know there has been a, a much longer history yeah the university um, museum in fact was founded in 1950s right if I, yeah 53 so it's been around uh, it's in fact the the oldest museum here in hong kong um and so you know, uh, and precedes even the the Hong Kong Museum of Art, which really didn't come into existence until much later. 
um, after the City Hall gallery, right? But I mean, you know, so there's this kind of um, stereotype that maybe Hong Kong lacked for institutions, but it wasn't completely absent. I mean, there was, so the University um, Museum, um, the Art Center was founded in the 1970s, yeah, uh, and Han Art then comes into being in the 1980s, and you know, there's also Videotage that gets founded in the 1980s, Parasite in 1996, Asia Art Archive comes around in 2000, so you know, there's this kind of continual history. Um, I was just wondering, you know, um, what are for you the kind of most important markers or milestones in that kind of development or in the conversation between the art market um, and the cultural centers, like, are there ones that for you are really kind of turning points in that, in that? Yeah. <laughs> for any of us. Uh. Look, look at you. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, um, for, for an artist to, 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 uh, to launch, launch the career, to, to, for them to come out into the public and say, I'm an artist, I'm a, I'm a career artist. Um, that one needs the, a platform that legitimizes it. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, of course, the art gallery is one such platform. Mm -hmm. But um, but the platform which is more important in, in terms of its um, power of endorsement would be um, uh, an in independent organization which is not commercial. And uh, since Hong Kong never really uh, uh, had uh, well, Hong Kong does not until now uh, has taken uh, international con international contemporary art seriously. So, Hong Kong Art Centre has always been the only place uh, mm. from 1977 on. Uh, so, almost uh, every artist who come from abroad, from China, from Taiwan, when they need, when they want to find a public platform, it would be the Hong Kong Art Centre. So it is absolutely critical, even though the space is terrible, I must say. Yeah. But um, <laughs> but it has the authority, so it doesn't really matter. Mm. And uh, um, and um, so uh, we all pin our hopes on on the um, on, on the uh, on the recently reopened Hong Kong Museum of Art. Mm. Um, now there's uh, in the last twenty years everything has changed there as well. So we. We we we're very, very optimistic about that, and then we hope that uh, um, the M Plus Museum will finally open eventually. They have hope they've actually stopped the building from sinking into the sea, mm -hmm. and <laughs> we'll have it in the year too. Mm -hmm. um, and it is very important to have a, um, a museum which actually looks. Um, see Hong Kong, uh, the Hong Kong Museum of Art because uh, it is a, it is a state government museum, so um, its emphasis is Hong Kong, yeah. but. Um, but the uh, very important position of Hong Kong is actually um, it is uh, it is the uh, should be the heart of Asia, mm -hmm. and the mission of M Plus uh, really f uh, is there to fulfill the the destiny of Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. um, any other country in Asia, if they want to hold, uh, if they want to host a museum of Asian contemporary art, especially, um, will 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 not. Um, will not uh, uh, um, accord this uh, role the same type of legi legitimacy that Hong Kong can, can, mm. can do. Mm. And uh, so in a way, Hong Kong is w one of the very few places that everybody else would say, well, this is the, this is the, the lesser of two evils, either me or you, mm -hmm. and there will be Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. So um, <laughs> we, 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 should, we should really cherish this and push this forward. Mm -hmm. so, so cosmopolitanism is kind of wins out, yeah. Mm. Um, maybe I add to that by saying that um, since you ask about turning points, I, I think very um, sort of milestone turning points are certainly when the general public and a bigger audience becomes aware of what we do, right? I mean, there are many people out there who think that Hong Kong doesn't have a lot of culture and, and naturally we disagree, but it's just because we work so hard to engage a public and, and we do that together. And I think the, the big t turning points are when people, you know, become aware of the art fairs like Art Basel, but also the many, many, many other events. I mean, now some people think that, yeah, Hong Kong has something in March, but of course we have a lot going on year round and other commercial events this week, other other fairs and so on, and then then museum exhibitions, um, you know, so many that I think none of us is even able to see them all. So it's it's becoming very, very lively. And I think 
it is very important to for all of us to 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 keep at it and and make our work relevant and to to help Hong Kong develop in that way mm. that we bring more important artists that we 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 bring academic critical interesting exhibitions to Hong Kong curate them here work with partners artists elsewhere and in Hong Kong and and create that platform that 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 people um, appreciate and, and also come for um, my my hope for the future would be maybe that the that the tourism board acknowledges us a little bit more and also blows our trumpet in the sense that that they think of cultural events um, when they think of of our own city right and, and, and promote um, them accordingly and so that that Hong Kong um, is, is seen as an interesting and attractive cultural destiny for us and others here around. Yeah, and I think to that point, um, Connie, one of the things I really liked about the diagram that you showed is that you put education yeah. at the middle, at the center of it, right? And I was wondering, Florian, if you can say, um, you know, um, have you had conversations, you know, you're at a university, at, at an academic setting, um, and uh, even though they don't necessarily get so much attention, I think the universe, there are actually quite a few university art museums in Hong Kong. Um, and I was wondering if you know you've had conversations with your peers about you know what it is that you know the schools and the place of the schools in 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 this kind of larger ecology because that doesn't necessarily always get as much attention as other other parts of other niches I guess. Yeah, I mean we we certainly um, we we talk to one another we we share the same interests and I think what what we all share very much so the the university museums at, at uh, Chinese U, Hong Kong U, and the gallery at at City U is that we want to be open to everybody, mm. right? Many university museums are seen as as uh, sort of on campus uh, service providers that 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 cater to to students and alumni, and and that's very much true when it comes to to teaching enrolled students in, in credit bearing programs. But beyond that, I think uh, college museums, university museums are really interested in, in, in being a community cultural center and, and to, to work with, with everybody and, and for everybody. And also, I think with that in mind to, to create a, an individual profile, maybe that that fits into the larger cultural landscape and 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 gives um, individual institutions sort of their own personality. I mean, for for us, that's certainly something that that I try to do over the last seven years um, to to make us more uh, prominent and and more important for Hong Kong, not at all. In, in competition with other institutions, but rather to to add to to the community and maybe by bringing in more international projects to also add something that that Hong Kong didn't really have so much when I arrived. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, um, that's yeah, that's really yeah, good to hear. Um, go, yeah. Can I share yeah. something? I, I think it's when you say. It's about not turning point, but I think some figures that is um, is very significant. You see the growth of the uh, the the whole arts um, culture scene. First of all, is I graduated in the Hong Kong University in 1996. We only we have less than 10 people graduate at that year, mm. and up to now, is uh, uh, over 200 person. 200 persons in um, major fine arts. I think this is one thing is very important um, because as more people are interested about art, and and then it's like a, at in the very beginning, it's only uh, for art making, it's only Chinese university. Mm -hmm. So every year they only produce less than 20 yeah. artists, less than 20 artists, and then we have the uh, the art center from the art school is uh, the years of 2000. And then we have the um, Baptist universities, um, they have their art academy, and then we have the City U. And then now, every year, mm -hmm. you have over 100 artists yeah. graduate. So I think this is, when you say 10 points, you have to think about um, the people who is working in this industry. And then this is, is like, um, 
more than five times grow yeah. than the bars. Uh, I think this is something uh, make the scene very different. Yeah, that's a really important point. Is that you know, among the audience for art, there's also artists, right? Like, and the fact that you know you have all these new faculties that have come into being in the last twenty years. Yeah, uh, and then you need art administrators. You need people who know art history yeah. to work in the <laughs> museums yeah. and art centers. Yes. Yeah, and that that uh, that. Uh, is a really good point, and I think that brings me to to the last question that um, I had uh, circulated amongst us, which concerns you know the recent developments. I mean, because I think one of the things that the these hundreds of um, art students coming out of school have been doing is kind of you know working in new arts organizations, right? So we don't just have M Plus, which is going to open. We also already have Daigun as a as an art space. We have Chat. We have, um, you know, a plethora of new galleries. We have a whole entire skyscraper that's full of galleries now, uh, H Queens, and uh, as well as you know, multiple galleries that are in the South Island. Um, and I was wondering, um, how does this kind of explosion of new players, new, you know, new organizations, how does that change, you know, how how you think about what, um, you know, your organization, how how it thinks about it's what it does you know does it change like how you program the art center for instance or you know does it does this affect like you know which artists you think you know would be appropriate for you to work with at han art um you know how does this all kind of inform what you're doing this kind of you know like um, explosive growth i guess yeah well uh, every every institution um, and every gallery ha uh, has has uh, its own direction and its own inclination. Mm. So um, I have a few things I'm interested in, and then I'll go in that direction. Mm. Um, but uh, whether um, whether whether the, the world needs so many artists, I'm <laughs> I, I find it questionable. <laughs> but um, but but I think art education is uh, very important, not just for the fact that we uh, we need to educate artists so that to uh, art to people uh, to people so they become artists or art uh, cultural. Uh, to, to, uh, for people to work in the cultural field, but um, but the fact that in the twenty first century, knowledge mm -hmm. now um, is increasingly less co um, compartmentalized, mm -hmm. and one the, the one unifying factor of the sciences and the different sciences and humanities um, uh, is the the training of sensibilities, mm -hmm. uh, aesthetics. So the training of art is no longer just this issue of um, going into uh, Chinese art history, Western art history, and then we have a splattering of naive art or whatever. Um, and it is not about, uh, uh, what I'm trying to say is not really just about cultural histories anymore. Mm. Um, it is really about the possibility of uh, these cultural history breeding generating uh, um, separate, uh, specialized sensibilities towards the world that can contribute to the study of sciences and other, other, other disciplines. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm not that op optimistic of having hundreds of artists in the street. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Well, we, we work with some of them um, for educational programs. As much as we display them, we also um, engage them um, every weekend um, for for different um, public programs and outreach. So I think, and, and public discussions indeed. So I think what you say about education and outreach is really, really important. And of course, as, as much as we curators think that we are super important, I think artists in conversation with the public in you know, conducting guided tours and so on uh, are at least as important. And so it's quite interesting, I think, for us to to benefit from that growing artist community that, that Connie just described, to 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 work together with, with different professionals. I mean we we are all quite similar, I guess, in some ways, but also to work with, with different um, professionals in the very, you know, multifaceted um, art scene to, to work together. Um, I think with the, the gr to answer your question a little bit, to the, uh, with regards to the growing art scene, I think it is really exciting for everybody that there's more and more going on, that there are more and more galleries, more and more museums. I think we all wait for, for more players to come to the table and to 
to to contribute to the art scene. I mean, Hong Kong is a, is a huge city. I mean, it's it's larger than 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 many European countries. I think we can we can do more. And I think the more there is, the more people are aware of an art scene, and and the more interest there is. I think we all help generate interest and and grow the art scene. And and I I wish the the galleries also the the younger and and newer galleries well to we we want everybody to be here and as you mentioned the south side you know that's a fairly new art district i i think it's it's fantastic that there's just so much going on now yeah. so there's like a definite multiplier effect that you're seeing in in the kind of i think boom. so and yeah. i i very much hope for it too so i'm i'm optimistic <laughs> 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 okay great um connie do you have i, I think it's um um Yes, we, we I think the world do not does not need a lot of artists, but I think um, the world needs a lot of art thinking people. Mm -hmm. I, I think this is really important about the art educations. Mm -hmm. I think now at this moment we need uh, to raise up more sophisticated uh, audience. Mm -hmm. I think this is really important, yeah. so they will appreciate art, and then they they think art is part of their living. I think what is the to me. Um, what is the uh, the most uh, perfect world is like the arts is living, mm -hmm. and I, I think uh, this is take a long time because I always admire uh, Johnson because is um, he is uh, internalized things. It's his daily life is what he's thinking is always art related and <laughs> how he enjoy about this. I, I think this is something is like uh, when we enjoy life. Uh, life and with art and that's become part of your daily life things yeah. and and i think it's collecting is become very naturally because you just want to buy something good and nice yeah. i think this is things and and also uh, when we say art education is also one thing is like uh, what you appreciate your own cultures and as well as you appreciate other people's cultures i think this is what uh, when we have the art education is about openness and also embrace and acceptance so this is what I think is, this is something I think in the futures, what we are working in the, in the art scene, we can work together to rethink about that, yeah. Okay, well, so maybe th that's a good note on which to open up the conversation to the floor. And so do people have questions? And, and Jans, okay, we already have a hand back there. Um, hi, Johnson, Connie, uh, John, Florian. It's good, uh, good to see you again. Uh, uh, I'm Gao Yi from Christie's Education. Thank you so much for talking so much about education because that's an area that I'm very much focused on. Uh, but my question is, um, um, earlier this uh, month, um, I think many of us went to Shanghai uh, during the art fairs, and we see the new museums and many galleries had exhibitions. Um, just because we are talking about Hong Kong's position today as a trading hub and also as a cultural hub for art. Um, but Shanghai is also emerging very, very fast. Um, the fairs are doing great, and many galleries, local, international, they are participating. So my question is, going forward, uh, what do you think um, is Hong Kong's advantage? And also how Hong Kong should position itself, uh, considering the competition from vibrant cities like Shanghai? Who wants to take that one? Um, I can try and start. Um, first of all, I think it's important, for me at least, to say that I don't think there's any competition. Um, I don't really believe in competition and in general, and I think that China and the, the area is large enough for many, 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 many art centers. Um, again, the more the merrier in a way, because more people will become aware of it. Um, Hong Kong's position, I think, is very, very special because it is a seasoned art market. Is it, it is a free port and it has a legal system that promotes um, business and international exchange. The, the art market here thrives with um, art exchange and dealings that have nothing to do with Hong Kong. So it's a really interesting platform beyond the the visual art, I mean the, the arts that we see. And I think as long as that uh, stays in place, Hong Kong will be very, very attractive. And not that Shanghai is not, but I think different cities, different art markets 
grow in their own way and at their own pace, and I think they all have a reason for being there. But I'm a non-commercial person, so I don't really know why I am. So I, I just add up to what uh, Florian said. I think in the uh, beginning when we have the art fair in Hong Kong, they, um, some people have a very negative thoughts with the, about having um, too commercialized will affect the Hong Kong art scene to develop. But um, eventually, uh, they saying is not necessarily have to be negative, but can be very uh, positive um, impact. So I think uh, in Shanghai, they have a, such a successful um, art fairs and art scene. That might be compliments to Hong Kong also, because I totally agree with uh, Florin that is not necessarily have to be compete in a way. Being a cultural scene is we uh, compliment, compliment each other. Because it's not only Shanghai is vibrant, I think the coming Taipei Dang Dai as also can be very vibrant. So we cannot be thinking everything is negative, but I think is there always be synergy. And for example, people who from the States and Europe, they travel all the way to Asia. They just don't stop at one place. They might go to other places. I think this is, might be a benefit to each other. Johnson, do you have any thoughts you'd like to share? Yeah, I certainly think that uh, China can afford to have more than one cultural center, and Hong Kong is a very special one. Um, the, the art that's, uh, that, that, uh, that comes here, the art that grows out of here, would be very different from, from Shanghai. Um, but when you talk about it in, from the angle of the market, then, it's, then, then of course there's a pressure on, um, if you take all the collectors in the world together who we'll spend money, um, there's, there's one, one big pot that everybody wants to have a, have a share. And, uh, and I think Shanghai, um, Shanghai now is, uh, uh, is attracting um, a lot of collectors. So it is a, it is a, it is a challenge in, in, in this sense, it's competition in this sense. Um, Taiwan, Taipei, Dang Dai, Taipei always had a very strong um, collecting base. And in fact, it is, um, it is really the longest running um, contemporary collect, co uh, art collecting circle in, in the Chinese world um, before Hong Kong. So um, it is sophisticated and it is, uh, it is very broadly based. So um, in a way, uh, in terms of the market, Hong Kong really has no competition with, uh, to, to Taiwan for Chinese contemporary art. Would you say, though, that um, you know, in the case of Shanghai or Taipei as kind of art markets, not as cultural centers, but as art yeah, markets, market. um, that the people who participate in those markets are primarily from Taiwan or from China? I mean, does, does Shanghai, for instance, attract collectors from all over Asia, or is it primarily like drawing on the collector base within the country? John, you're absolutely right. Um, everybody is trying to draw the collectors from all the, all these places, mm -hmm. and uh, Taiwan has a very big collector base. Mainland China has now even big collector base because yeah. they have a deep, they have very deep pockets, and uh, it is at a time when they're very keen to spend money. Mm -hmm. um, but then um, you know that changed. People's appetite gets sated, and they want to move on. Mm -hmm. So um, in that sense, um, Hong Kong does have an advantage because uh, Hong Kong. Um, is flexible, is, is open, um, but the huge disadvantage of Hong Kong is it's just so costly to run any operation in Hong Kong. Mm. And uh, so we cannot afford for commercial operators to have as attractive spaces uh, mm. as they do in Taiwan or Shanghai. Yeah. Mm. Interesting. Uh, yeah, and maybe one more thing to add to the the question of what maybe uh, Hong Kong has to offer. I would say that you know, in the case of Shanghai, certainly um, there are you know increasing number of galleries in Shanghai, and there are now these art fairs that you know are attracting a lot of attention, and there are even museums. But that um, the at least within speaking from a nonprofit perspective, that the museums. Um, still are maybe finding themselves or finding like you know how they can operate how they can function and i think there's a little bit uh this not quite the kind of same level of professionalization um and that's something that maybe hong kong um has i think pioneered in some ways and kind of you know i think it's exemplary the way that m plus has really tried to kind of create not just an institution but also the knowledge base for people arts professionals within 
Hong Kong so that you know people get trained, they know how to do things. And I think this is something that arts organizations here are very much you know about investing within human resources, investing within um, the staff so that we have a professional arts community here. Yeah. Uh, other questions? And, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, first, I want to thank um, all four of you. It's wonderful to see people who are so passionate and dedicated to the cultural uh, scene. And it's really a testament to the strength of Hong Kong in that sense. And I go back to what Florian said. I moved to Hong Kong around the same time. I've been traveling here since 91, in China since 1989, but moved here around the same time. And I moved for the same reason. Is There is a lot happening here. I had a gallery. I still have a space in London, 25 years. But you feel like in London, everything has been done. Whereas here, there is so much that can be done. And you can, even as a gallerist, contribute something to it, whatever, however small, but um, somehow create possibly a, a better environment. Uh, and I think that's very important. I also enjoy Johnson talking about collecting. I think uh, this is something that we must um, more and more emphasize. Uh, we, you know, everybody, the gallery has to, the gallery of course have to survive. We have to pay exorbitant rents and the artists, they have to live. But at the same time, collecting cannot become just about an investment. It has a journey of discovery, uh, a daily journey of discovery. And this is what we should encourage young collectors to understand, that that owning art, or even just looking at art, is is a, is, is, is a privilege. And, and it will make you, you know, it just, it just enriches your life in ways that, uh, that you can't really quantify. Um, I also think that um, we have, um, a duty in a way, um, especially this moment. And I think I think what art sh can do, and whether it's through exhibition at the, in galleries or whether through education, to the activity of the Hong Kong Art Center, what art can do and what we can do is really to create uh, and to sustain uh, dialogue and openness. Um, I think we all would agree that we need more of that, particularly in this time that polarization seems to be the name uh, throughout the world, not just in the city, but uh, you see America, England, France, Italy. And so we have a very important role, uh, all of us, to play. Um, I want to just to ask something about um, we talk about artists, and I agree with John. So we don't need hundreds and hundreds of artists, but <laughs> we, you know, the, but we need dedicated artists for sure. We need good artists and artists that artists are very important in the ecosystem, of course. So we cannot we cannot have a proper ecosystem if there are no artists. So the question is, uh, going back, how, the, how difficult it is to be a, uh, to have a studio in Hong Kong? How expensive? How um, you know? You know, you know, you know very well. Lee Kit moved to Taiwan and and things like that. So, what should and 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 if, and if what should the government do more for art and and artists in general? And if so, what they should do, or um, it's without interfering, of course, with what art and artists do. Um, do you have any opinion on that? Is there something that we can do? Has uh, art industry? Is a way we can encourage uh, more uh, investment, not just in the infrastructure which has happened and plus, etc., but more in the in the grassroots of of the art uh, education and art practice. So, so yeah. So, in other words, the the rising rents that Johnson was pointing out as a problem for galleries is, of course, also a problem for artists, right? And for everyone, in fact. So, what is what maybe could be done about that? Well, the government actually does put a lot of money into the art. So, um, so to be to really to be fair, um, but of course the bureaucracy doesn't allow it to, to to go to to where it really needs to go. Um, uh, but it's that is in a way sometimes it's not just the uh, just the figure. For me, I think um, uh, this rental issue uh, also has to do with regulations. For example, um, Osage Gallery, um, Agnes has been doing 
some most brilliant exhibitions, but then she's not allowed to open because uh, she she does them in the place where she's cheap, but then she does it in the industrial building and it is uh, it's an industrial zone. So um, you know, things like that, um, the opening up of um, uh, of uh, spaces for for art sh exhibiting and art production, well, that is actually very important, and uh, that is certainly something that can be legislated. Mm. That's a good point. Yeah, I think it's not necessary uh, to seek help from the government. I, I, I met quite a number of Shanghai artists. Actually, is the developer. They allow them to freely use their space for one or two years, but in return, they give them their artwork. So I think my artist friend has. They're very happy. They feel comfortable. But after three years, they, they, the developer asked them to have a certain amount of uh, um, rent, but uh, still very cheap. And then um, in return, they still have to give artwork. But you know now, uh, the, the rent in Shanghai is not cheap. So if they want to have a big studio space, and this is really helpful for them. In Hong Kong, if we, some of the developer is willing to do this as like some trade-off, the artist has no need to give them cash. The artist can give them artworks afterward. Will be very helpful, and also will change um, some of the limitations in the Hong Kong art scene. Is artists cannot make big paintings. I think this will be very helpful. That's a very good point because um, um, art in exchange for other costs. And I think I think also developers should be aware that um, holding art exhibitions. Is is a more effective and cheaper form of advertising for for them. And K11 is weak, uh, Adrian is uh, is waking up to this fact. Um, so this this is actually a very good proposal. Do we have developers in the room? I I I want to add to that, and just because you also spoke about um, have the money trickle down to the to the grassroots. Level. I mean, it's certainly the, the the biggest problem here is affordable housing, right? If you look at the the cities around the world that have become thriving art centers, I mean, throughout history, but also in recent history, um, they are cities that have a good infrastructure, deeply ingrained culture, like for example Berlin, and and not in 2019, but uh, 20 years ago, very, very low rents in, in, in some times, especially in the east, of course, of, of the city. And so I think that is really, really key to having a lively um, art scene and, and for to attract people. I mean, if and completely international people, right? I think half of the artists that participate in the, in the Venice Biennale live in Berlin. So it's not a local phenomenon, but it's an, it is, the international art center and so if cities want to become that or want to work on that this wasn't the city government's decision but the with the uh, the the ground uh, fertile ground being there it, it just developed in that way and hong kong has a sophisticated art scene now it doesn't permit for the the hundreds of artists that we we now produce to to survive and work here uh, maybe one last question. Uh. Uh, thanks so much, you know, for sharing your insight you know, with us. Okay, I have no question. I want to add a little bit. Because, uh, okay, uh, I'm in the industry for 28 years, but compared to Johnson, you know, it's nothing. You are your iconic figure. I'm still learning from you. But okay, what I see, you know, we are very happy. You know, I'm very happy to see, you know, the art scene had grown. You know, ex uh, the galleries, overseas international galleries coming, local galleries keep opening. Everything is good. We have a museum coming. But that's one thing what I see. You know, uh, I also sitting in some of the government, you know, I mean, uh, uh, service board. I see that, like Johnson said, government did, you know, give a lot of money. So, but then they don't have, you know, great idea. You know, they will give money to open the museum, they will give a, so the excitement it should be from us, you know, because like Connie said, we are the art people, right? So we have a billion idea. And, but I see, you know, there's a one problem. For example, French May, you know, they're putting a lot of resources, having a board, you know, with 12 staff, bringing a lot of French artists. So I'm sitting there for the 10 years as a board member. And then I keep telling them, 
So you want to promote your French, why don't you? But then they lack of what? They lack of education. They bring good show. But then if I see, you know, foreign, you know, if they bring the show to you, for sure you have a lecture. But sometimes, you know, the Gary calm because we have a limited resources. So I think it's a collaboration, it's a putting, you know, the professional curator, lecturer, you know, professor to talk, you know, and then also to share the resources. Okay, uh, this year I'm sitting, you know, you know, as a, a co-chair lady. I, you know, I, that's my vision, you know, I hope, you know, which I can help. For example, you know, yesterday, I heard about a big news, you know, uh, Uffizi Museum is going to bring a big collection you know, to uh, Hong Kong next year. So the Italian consulate, you know, have, you know, I mean, the aim to promote the Italian culture here. But then uh, we have a thought yesterday. I say, why you always want to promote only Italian? Think about the Italian artists I and mean, the Chinese artists living in Italy. Chinese artists, you know, I mean, uh, uh, maybe study in Italy and been back here. So I think, can we really have, you know, a collaboration with the galleries, you know? Johnson, maybe you can give the opinion. So I think if you do, you know, say for example, October is your, uh, okay, Italian so-called promotion. But how come we do, you don't open, you know, to us earlier? So maybe the Gary, if you have an Italian artist or Chinese artist, you know, related to Italy, we can do it together in the one month, you know? And then, because uh, each Gary don't have a, such a marketing too to promote, right? We, we cannot pay the PR. We don't have uh, that much, you know, marketing. And then we can share, you know, like what we do in the Hong Kong Art Week. So all the Gary, if they wishes, they can participate. Art Center, you can also have uh, something related. That's what I feel, you know. We say we should, you know, have the collaboration between institute, museum, galleries, you know. So then we can uh, achieve, you know, the ultimate result, you know. I mean, we can attract more, more audience, you know, to visit us. So that's, that's what I feel. I don't know whether it's correct, but then I think, you know, like what you say, every institute have its limitation, you know. So if we group together, so we can res res uh, achieve, you know, a maximum, you know, better result. Thank you. I I think it's a it's a journey. It's it's about education, and um, as we both are very fond of the French May, for example, but for example. For us, it doesn't make any sense to work with the French May and take in an exhibition. We don't do that, actually. We get through the consulate or the French May in touch with French, in French institution and curate the exhibition and ask for loans. We select the loans and bring them here to create something for Hong Kong. What you describe that a foreign institution offers something to Hong Kong that work only really, I think, works with the LCSD institutions where they just get the packet and unpack and don't develop an exhibition really for Hong Kong. I don't want to be too critical with that approach, but it's exactly what you described. There has to be a cultural exchange and exhibitions have to be curated for our public here. Many Hong Kong residents, foreign or local, travel the world and they know exactly what's going on. We don't need to get something from a port and unpack and hang the paintings. We need to create something and add something for the community here. For example, you know, Johnson, if you're an artist, you know, you have a Chinese artist, you know, educate and live once in Italy. Maybe, you know, he's under certain influence. So you just propose to them, you know. So foreign, I agree with you. So they are not the one. Okay, with the museum is there, you know, okay. Because if they work with the museum, they bring the big collection. So there's a marketing, you know, we have awareness. But in, you know, in that month, you know, that's what I say. There's a different level of artists, young artists, you know or establish, right? So we can, you know, all gallery or institute can choose, you know, can have a billion idea to propose to them. But then in fact, that get, you know, what I say, you know, we can get the maximum, you know, in a result together, you know. But with individual, I mean, every gallery, every institute have their own individual, you know, I mean, idea for their creation. That's what I mean, yeah.
But I think if you approach the government through the consulate with these ideas, they will be open to it. I mean, the exhibitions that we do with the French may, like for example, the Willy Ronis exhibition this year, that, that idea was born in Hong Kong. That idea wasn't born by the French May, it wasn't born in Paris. We ask for the loan objects to come for pa from Paris for a Hong Kong exhibition. So I think with your idea and with your connections, if you speak to the Italian consulate, if you speak to the French consulate, to whoever, I'm sure they will be excited about that. No, that's, you know, they already, because it uh, seems, you know, French May is successful. But then uh, I think uh, I keep telling them, I said, it's not only you want to promote your culture, it's a sharing, you know, and also there's a different taste, like what you say. So if you're not going to involve our, like, uh, Hong Kong artists, our local, you know, I mean, curators for, you know, it's still, you know, only a so-called cultural event, only for the French. So I think now they're open now, because like what you say, you know, you put so much resources, you know, to promote your French, but if you don't get the local to have a, you know, respond, you know response, you know, it's not so called, I mean, you just feed us the culture. So instead, it should be the cultural exchange, you know. So I think they are changing. Foreign, I tell you, they are changing, yeah. I, I think so that's what I say, you know, I, I, see, I see on the different desks. I see if we can collaborate together, I think use, you know, because every individual party have a limited resources. So if we do it together, but like what you say, we have to respect each other's creativity. I think the beauty, you know, is the artist's mind and then the cr individual creativity. But, but I think we do that. I mean, we when to go back to the, the last French exhibition that we did, a big photo exhibition, we connected with the Hong Kong Photo Festival, we worked with local photographers, we offered workshops to the general public to know more about photography. I think there is an exchange and it's it's takes a lot of energy and connections and, and at times funds to organize that. But I think we are all on the same page. We are doing that. I no, think it's I not mean enough. That's what I say. We should open more to the all galleries, you know, you know, all galleries, you know. And also, like, for example, we have so many professor lecturers here. So uh, it should, you know, even, you know, share the resources, you know, to give a more lecture, you know, on each, you know. Exhibition. Well, so maybe sharing of resources, beauty of individual mind and creativity, maybe that's a good point on which to to end our panel because I think I'm also getting signals from, uh, from <laughs> that it's time to conclude for coffee break. Um, thank you all. Uh, thank you, Connie, for uh, the talk. And thank you, Florian and Johnson, for participating in the panels. And thank you for being here. Um, we will begin again at 4.30. Is that right? Yes, at 4.30. So in the meantime, we have coffee and tea in the back? In the back. So, um, and of course, we are uh, free to continue conversation uh, over coffee and tea. Okay, thank you. <laughs>